YouTube, hello. I made a late game Biobrick Diesel Pure build in Tectonica that is compact and also expandable. In this video, I will show you what you need to get it set up, show the setup off, and explain how to put it together as well. Let's get right into it. As for what you need for the build to make the pure biobrick diesel, there will be four main ingredients that you will need to have automated. One of which is sesamite coolant. Another is sesamite powder, carbon powder brick, and then finally sesamite gel. Those are the four ingredients that will go into the pure diesel. You can see them here. There will be a few other things that you need to get this done as well. Whatever type of platform you want to use for your build, I just use the 3x3 Calisite platform for everything that I do. There's quite a list of inserters that I use for various reasons. I generally just use stack inserters everywhere that I can. There's also a long inserter. It is slow, but some of the components in this build do not need to move that fast. For the ones that do need to move faster, there is a long stack filter inserter. You do need containers for a couple of locations just to transfer materials. We also use the stack filter inserters on the crushers to get specific materials onto the belts that we want them on. And in saying that, you will need assemblers, preferably Mark II since this is an in-game build, and then a couple of crushers as well. And, of course, you will need conveyor belt. Now that we've seen what it takes to make the build, I will go through it in more detail and show it off in the next part. For this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you the recipes that I use. To do so, I'm going to press Alt and turn on the Alt mode so that the assemblers will show what recipes they are being used for inside of them. You can see the first assembler here is making Biobrick. This is where the entire production starts. I do only have one machine making this for my entire line, and that is because this outputs at 500 per minute. We take that bio brick and put it directly onto one belt that goes toward the back of the line, actually. That bio brick goes into a machine to make the bio brick a diesel that is unrefined. It does also take sesamite coolant in that machine to produce this as well. The next step of the process is to make the Biobrick Diesel Infusion Pack, which uses the unrefined Biobrick Diesel, as well as sesamite powder and carbon powder brick to make the infusion packs. From that, we go to the final step of the process. One of the crushers that makes the pure Biobrick Diesel, actually, this takes the Biobrick Diesel Infusion Packs, and if you look on the top right, it's kind of small, or in the middle of the crusher. You can see that it produces the pure Biobrick Diesel from this, as well as a Biobrick Diesel that is impure. We do use a filter inserter to get that impure Biobrick Diesel specifically into the last crusher, last machine in the build. And that Biobrick Diesel that is impure makes the Biobrick Diesel unrefined, which is what we had earlier in the build, as well as the Shiverthorn coolant. One note here that I'll mention again when we put one of these together, that Shiverthorn coolant goes back to our factory that makes the Sesamite coolant and gets absorbed back into that so it doesn't back up at all. I will go to the end of this line and show off the setup in the next part right after I mention exactly how much space you need from the original machine that is making the bio brick. Just a short note here on the spacing for this build and the way that I have it set up. The machine that is making the bio brick at the beginning of the process has a belt of carbon powder brick that we're going to need for a later step in the process directly in front of it. I have that belt going completely straight. To line this up, off of that belt, you put an assembler, one inserter away, and that inserter, or that assembler is going to be what is actually making the biobrick diesel on fusion packs. You leave two spaces, one for an inserter and one for a belt, 
for putting down the original assembler that makes the buyer brick diesel unrefined. From there, the spacing that you need on the belt moving the bio brick is just one more inserter and then you have the bio brick coming out on the final belt. We do bring the sesamite coolant in on one belt beyond that. The belt that is in between the assemblers has the sesamite powder on it. And then we have our original carbon powder brick belt at the front of the line. One other note, the sesamite gel that we bring into this is only used for the bio brick. It does not get pushed any further back than that. It is used at one and two per minute for the inputs here. So I do have a normal long inserter. And now that we know the spacing, I'm going to actually put one of these setups together. The expandable part of this build is because these belts are all straight for each individual section of this setup. Now that we have the spacing on the belts all together, we have our bio brick on a belt. I'm going to copy the assembler that is here making the bio brick diesel that is unrefined. I'm going to bring it in line with the one that I just copied. You would be doing this at the beginning of the line if this was your first setup. You need to put four of these down in a row. And then you need to expand the belts that are inputting the bio brick and expand the belt that is inputting the sesamite coolant into these as well. I am just using the stack inserters for the bio brick production into these buildings. And I am using the long inserter for the sesamite coolant. Long inserter again is slow, it's only at 15 per minute, but the sesamite coolant only gets used at 12 per minute anyway. The That will start that process up and get those running already once it has enough in there. Uh, it does take 40 bio breaks, so the second surgery does take a little while. This is also the end of my line already. Yours should start kicking up much faster. To continue expanding then, I'm going to go the, to the other side of the assemblers. I'm going to copy the one. You will put this right in line with your first row of assemblers. You just want to make sure that you have the two spaces in between for the belt and the assembler itself. The belt and the inserter. And then you will also put four of these buildings down as well. That will get you the spacing that you need. And then I would come in and you can expand the belt that is bringing the sesamite powder all the way down to this location, the first input of the fourth assembler that you had just put down. I do use stack inserters, I believe here one at the first location on each of the assemblers like this and then this does need to be moved faster so i do use the long stock filter inserter with using the unrefined biobrick diesel as the filter on it just to clear one off and show you where it is on the list as well i will do that for the last one you do have to scroll down, assuming you have everything unlocked, and it is right here with the two dots on the top left. It is the first in the line of the different biobrick diesels that show up. Once you select that and the building starts producing, which we can see now the biobrick has gotten down here, so it is starting to go off there. These will be able to produce. They should already be bringing the decimite powder in one thing they need is at the front of the build you can extend the belt that is bringing the carbon powder brick all the way to the first slot on the fourth inserter i believe i use stack inserters here they're kind of just my go-to which it does look like that is what i did the place that i use the boxes is kind of specific because of the size of the crusher the first container that you put down will be directly in front of the last assembler in the row. When you move to the other side, you will not be in front of the first assembler. You actually move over by one space. You put that container down there. And then crushers, you actually don't select recipe for. 
they just go off of what you insert into them. I'm going to put the first crusher down now and get to this process started. To do so, we are using the long inserters coming out of these machines. The Biobrick diesel infusion packs are only made at 8 per minute, so the long inserter is going to be just fine for that. The first machine is going to put into the container. The next two machines will put directly into the crusher, and then the fourth machine will insert into the container as well. To get that into the crusher from the containers, I just use stack inserters. And then once all of those actually produce, the biobrick diesel infusion packs will be put into this crusher. We need to get a couple of things out of that crusher then. One of which is actually the stack filter inserters job here between the crushers. So we can put a stack filter inserter down. We're gonna be selecting the biobrick diesel impure on this one. And that is gonna put the impure biobrick diesel into another crusher directly ahead of that. We use another stack filter inserter uh, to get the biobrick diesel pure out. And that one will go back to our production line of biobrick diesel pure, wherever you decide you want it to go. Mine joins a belt on this side of the first second crusher and it goes that way. So you can see we are getting pure out of this already. That should also mean that we have some of the impure in here as well and it is processing for the coolant and the unrefined biobrick diesel as well i'm going to deal with the coolant first i use a stack filter inserted to get that coolant out as well and then i just run a belt back into my production line of the sugar thrown coolant going into sesamite coolant it takes all of that away and it goes down to where the coolant is made so that I will never run out here. The last step of this production then, I would let this run until you have about 200 or 300 biobrick diesel unrefined in this location. I'm going to cheat slightly for the video and take a couple hundred unrefined biobrick diesel out of my last build. I'm going to put this directly into the output of that crusher. I guess you can't actually. That's fine. I'm gonna take the stack filter inserter from this other one that has the biobrick diesel unrefined as its filter and put it there. I bring a belt out on that all the way over into the space that the assembler is still sitting. You can leave this assembler in place until you have a buildup of the biobrick diesel unrefined. Once you have 200 or 300 of that in that crusher, you can actually remove that assembler and put one piece of belt there so that this inserter can in put into the machine to make the biobrick diesel infusion packs. If you look at the machine making the biobrick diesel infusion pack that is here on the bottom left, you will see that it takes 56 of that to a minute to be able to produce. Looking at the assembler that is normally making the Biobrick Diesel Infusion Pack, it also produces at 56 per minute. That is why we used one of these machines to every one of these machines. This is the same output that we get from the Biobrick Diesel Impure. That is a 56 per minute as well which is why it works to remove the first assembler that is making the impure and use it this way instead once that is done you can get rid of the two inserters that we're inputting to make the first machine on biobrick diesel you can get rid of the extra belts if you don't need to expand at the moment and then if you deem do need to expand the production of your pure biobrick diesel you just do the exact same thing over again and it creates a long row like this the one limit that i can think of right now is the assembler making the biobrick 
does produce at 500 per minute. And each one of these setups will use 60 bio brick for the three assemblers making the unrefined biodiesel. So you can go until that comes up to the 500. Uh, it seems like you could put this down eight times. And then you would need to actually put down another assembler for the bio brick diesel. Sorry, for the pure, just the bio brick. That's the entire setup then. I'll put one short clip of where my Riverthorn coolant goes back into my coolant production, just in case you want to see how I recycle that. And once it gets up and running, the one thing you want to make sure is that you don't overfill the biobrick diesel unrefined. If this cannot output at all, it will actually stop this machine from running. Other than that, it should just produce pure biobrick diesel for you. All right, I've decided to do my outro at this, the location that, that my Shiverthorn coolant is going down into the production line. You can see it's coming along this belt here, and then it goes down a vertical belt. Going down that vertical belt, there is a merger between two another vertical belt. The production of my Shiverthorn coolant then is down below. I'm using the alternative recipe. It has the iron mechanisms, shiverthorn extract, sassamite powder. It produces a thousand a minute, which is faster than even one belt can handle. That goes directly up and into this merger. The shiverthorn coolant that is getting used in the sesamite coolant will always be used faster than the coolant that is coming up from the production. That is why that not line will never back up. So, now that this is also my outro, if you end up using this build in your own save, give me a like down below. If you see any improvements to the build that I can make, I actually saw one while making the video, but it's a minor thing, just a few belts I could get rid of. Uh, comment down below and let me know. Subscribe if you do want to see more Tectonica or automation videos in general. And if you want to see any gameplay live of Tectonica or other games, visit my Twitch down in the description as well. Thanks for watching, and have a great night.